A devastating fire destroys a historic building in downtown Ligorian and the community rallies to help those displaced by the fire. Orion Township dignitaries and staff came together to celebrate the official grand opening of the brand new municipal complex on Jocelyn Road. Beautiful weather welcomed the return of the Orion Art Center's Dragon in the Lake Festival. Four days of music, food and family friendly fun were capped off with the Dragon Boat Races on Sunday. Lake Orion residents gathered in Children's Park to officially kick off the holiday season with the tree lighting ceremony in the gazebo. Three, two, Hello everyone, I'm Stacey Calloway. Those are just some of the news stories that helped shape Liguori in 2022. Join us as we take a look back on ONTV News, the year in review. After two years of COVID restrictions and an unthinkable tragedy in Oxford at the end of 2021, the Lake Orion community desperately craved some sense of normalcy in 2022. Although the virus hasn't completely gone away, many events that were canceled during the pandemic returned, including a fun event on New Year's Day that got things off on the right foot. On the morning of New Year's Day 2022, approximately 150 runners and walkers gathered in downtown Lake Orion for the start of the New Year's Resolution Run 5K. Organized by Hanson's Running Shop, the starting line was set up on Lapeer Street, near Flint Street, and at 10 a.m. the race was underway. Runners, you're by. The annual event celebrated its 20th anniversary in 2020, but was canceled in 2021 due to the COVID pandemic. Organizers and participants were happy to see it return in 2022. Have this going again to see everyone come out for it. Oh man, it's great. Um, you know, when you have a tradition like this in Lake Orion and you have to take a year off, uh, it's not till you miss a year that you really understand what you're missing. So uh, having that year off, you know, we, we miss the, 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 the usuals that would dress in costumes. We miss the, the happy, saying Happy New Year to the, uh, the people that attend this every year. Um, so, uh, you know, Lake Orion is such a great community that we get a lot of the regulars out, not only in the running community, but also the Lake Orion community. So it, it means a lot to see everyone New Year's Day because we've been doing it for so long um, that, uh, you know, it's special to have this back. On Thursday, January 6th, the Orion Area Chamber of Commerce hosted its annual Impact Awards luncheon at Paint Creek Country Club in Lake Orion. Attendees enjoyed a buffet lunch and the chamber recognized its ambassadors, board members and staff and named its Impact Award recipients from 2021. The luncheon was sponsored by Michigan United Credit Union. The Impact Awards is the chance for the Chamber of Commerce to honor those in our community that have gone above and beyond to make Lake Orion a, a better place to live for everyone here. And named 2021's Business Person of the Year was Wayne Haney of Haney Farm Bureau Insurance. Sponsoring the award was Colin Buick GMC. Our Chamber Director Noelle Champagne called me to let me know the Chamber was naming me the Business Person of the Year. Noelle managed to pull off something few people can. She left me utterly speechless. I still don't have the words to properly thank you for this honor. On the afternoon of Friday, January 14th, the Orion Township Fire Department responded to a call of a major fire in downtown Lake Orion. Firefighters arrived to find smoke and flames coming from a two-story, nine-unit apartment building located at 35 North Broadway between Motor City Granite and the Fork and Pint restaurant. Smoke detectors alerted residents to the danger and all were evacuated safely. The historic building, however, suffered major damage and may be a total loss. The Orion Township Fire Department battled the blaze for approximately five hours and was aided by Oxford, Addison and Oakland Township Fire Departments. Despite challenges due to the frigid temperatures, they managed to prevent any serious damage to neighboring businesses. Nothing to Fork and Pint. There might have been a little smoke damage to the granite store to the south. You know, the interesting thing is I'm impressed with just because the weather was bad. It was cold outside, uh, so we fought the elements. Um, but there was really only about a 12 foot spacing between the structure fire and the two buildings on the north and south of it. So um, it's pretty remarkable that we kept it confined to where it was at. And I think if anything, just a little bit of smoke damage um, to the granite store. 
on Saturday, January 29th, the American Legion Post 233 opened their doors for a fundraiser benefiting the seven individuals who lost everything in the fire. Beginning at 2 p.m., visitors were encouraged to stop by to make a cash donation and to take part in a raffle for baskets of goodies donated by local businesses. On the evening of Tuesday, February 1st, Orion Township dignitaries, staff, and members of the community gathered together to celebrate the official grand opening of the brand new municipal complex. Located at 2323 Joslin Road near West Scripps Road, the 53,000 square foot complex houses Orion Township offices as well as the Oakland County Sheriff's Office Orion Township substation. Visitors were led on a guided tour of the facility and Township Supervisor Chris Barnett hosted a ceremony in the boardroom. After recognizing those who helped make this amazing complex a reality, dignitaries lined up for a ribbon cutting ceremony. Three, two, one. We had a lot of people that didn't think we could do this before COVID. And then COVID happened and we were right in the middle of it and we just said, we're going, we're doing it. And it was the best decision we could have made because now it's, 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 construction is going to be difficult to do anytime now. Um, so I'm very relieved, grateful to be here. Uh, we had an amazing team, uh, starting with our architects from Auger Klein Aller, Scott Reynolds, who everyone knows locally, uh, is an architect, but they were the little bitter, so they did it in the right way and um, did a phenomenal job. We worked with them on other projects um, and the whole team there. And then a construction management, excuse me, the construction management team can't say enough great stuff about Cunningham Limp. They were incredible. Um, advocates for us. They worked really hard and we wouldn't be here again today without that amazing team. In addition to the new Township Hall, the Oakland County Sheriff's Office has a brand new facility of their own. The department moved into the old Township Hall in 1997 where deputies had to function in less than ideal working conditions. Sheriff Michael Bouchard expressed his gratitude to the community for allowing this day to happen. Uh, appreciation to the community for the support of the project. Uh, you know, for our team, having facilities that are really up to the task and state of the art means a great deal. I mean, you come to work every day, and they come to work with pride. They're excited to work in Orion, but the building that they used to go to wasn't uh, kind of the cherry on top of the ice cream. You know, they'd show up and it'd be, okay, let's try to make this facility work and then go out and do great things. Now they come to a facility they're proud of. It's state of the art and it's in line with the community they're excited to serve. So it's really kind of a blessing, I think, for our team to have a place they not only love to come to work, but a community they love to serve. On the morning of Saturday, February 5th, more than 80 golfers descended on downtown Lagorian for the 8th annual Ice Cup Challenge. Participants checked in at Wine Social before gathering near Cookies and Cream for the kickoff. The annual event acts as a fundraiser for the Lake Orion Sunrise Rotary Club. What we do here today helps us fund all of the amazing things that we do for our community. Things like um, supporting our Oxford family through this recent tragedy, um, responding to the needs of our um, residents that lost their home in the fire, um, helping to take care of, of our um, fellow community members that are in need. 21 teams made of four people each visited nine holes set up throughout the village. Perks included snacks and drinks, a swag bag, a silent auction, and a chance to win fun prizes. The event can raise as much as $20,000 for local and international service projects. On Monday, February 7th, ONTV kicked off its week-long food drive, benefiting Oxford Orion Fish. Now in its 12th year, the food drive traditionally invited residents to come to the Orion Center to drop off food on a single Saturday, but due to the COVID pandemic, organizers focused on cash donations spread out over a week. Each day during the week, the food drive went live from noon until 2 p.m., with themed programming scheduled the rest of the day, including sports, music, and history. Prior to the start of the food drive, it was announced the goal would be $5,000. Well, it turns out ONTV severely underestimated the generosity of the Lake Orion community. Well, little did we know that the um, 
the sponsors would come through like gangbusters for us. Uh, we had a record number, 16, this year, and large donations on their behalf to help sponsor uh, the food drive and to give the donations to fish. So we hit our collection goal on that Monday of $5,100 uh, already had in hand uh, before we went, in, we went even on the air for the first time. So we were really enthusiastic about, we could really blow this number open um, so we upped it to 6,500 uh, midweek at the uh, suggestion of uh, Matt Pfeiffer, uh, owner of Northern Wholesale Flooring, um, who was a sponsor. And we did that, and we surpassed that goal, I think it was on Thursday night. Uh, we were above that 6,500 goal. And at the close of the food drive Friday uh, the 11th, uh, I checked our online donations, and it was at $7,100. Uh, but as you know, online uh, online donations, they take some fees. So uh, I would say we settled in on just about $7,000. In addition to cash donations, residents were also encouraged to fill the ONTV production truck, which was parked in the Orion Center parking lot. All of the food collected, as well as the money raised, goes directly to the Oxford Orion Fish Food Pantry, which is dedicated to helping those in need put food on the table. On Thursday, February 10th, the Lake Orion and Oxford Ice Fest continued with the launching of a trolley service that shuttled passengers back and forth between downtown Lake Orion and Oxford. The trolley will be in operation every Thursday from 4 to 9 p.m. and Saturdays from noon until 9 p.m. The two communities united to encourage residents to shop and dine at local businesses and restaurants. When Oakland County reached out to Molly and I about partnering together, um, I just thought it was the greatest opportunity. We're only three miles apart and we both have so much to offer. We both have wonderful restaurants and wonderful retail and businesses. So it was just, um, it came very natural. We were able to work with our teams very, very quickly and get along great. So this is just amazing for both communities. On Tuesday, March 15th, the Who's Who of Oakland County gathered at the M1 Concourse Event Center in Pontiac for the County Executive State of the County Address. Prior to the start of the address, a reception was held for the county's 40 under 40 class of 2022. A list of 40 new members was revealed in February, selected from 125 applicants who represent a wide variety of fields. The good news is we have a lot of talented individuals, young individuals, young professionals in this county. But so it was a tough, it was a tough group to get down to 40. But um, uh, it's an amazing group of people, really diverse in terms of well their demographics, but also their experience. You know, everything from a circuit court judge to to, to activists to nonprofit leaders to <laughs> business leaders, small business owners. It's it's just a, a really inspiring group of people. Frankly, uh, it makes me encouraged for the future. Following the reception, County Executive Dave Coulter rolled up in a Chevy Bolt EUV produced at GM's Orient Assembly Plant. He began his address by praising GM's commitment to Oakland County and Orient Township. GM recently announced a $4 billion investment to build the Chevy Silverado EV and the electric GMC Sierra at Orient. It's expected that this investment is going to add more than 2,300 new jobs and retain another 1,000 jobs when the plant is fully up and running. On the morning of Saturday, March 19th, 124 fifth graders gathered at Walden Middle School to compete in the Orion Township Public Library's Battle of the Books competition. Now in its 37th year, the fifth graders formed teams and a quiz on nine books that were announced back in November. The teams were asked 45 questions and had to respond with the correct title and author. We are super excited this year just because we got to do it back in person. We were virtual last year, so we spent the last uh, five months or so reading and getting ready and writing questions and preparing these teams for battle. New library director Chase McMahon got to experience his first battle of the books after getting hired in December to replace outgoing director Karen Knox. Uh, witnessing a lot of energy. Uh, it's, it's great to see all the kids out here. Um, Working as teams, I see a lot of great costumes, a lot of, a lot of good energy, so it's a lot of fun so far. Finishing in third place with 85 out of a possible 90 points was the Vowel Kings. Coming in second was the Book Army with 85 points and claiming the 2022 Battle of the Books title with 87 out of 90 points was Team Record Breakers. Made up of Eleanor Green, Vita Hutchins, Addison Cross, Sydney Ostertag, and Katie Smith. 
On Saturday, April 9th, 150 kids, along with their family members, gathered at the Orient Center for the annual Bunny Bop. This event is put on by the Orient Township's Parks and Recreation Department. The day was divided into three different sessions to accommodate the popularity of the event. We have the Easter Bunny behind me. We have the 4-H uh, group that brought wild bunnies, so they're here as well. Uh, we have snacks and, of course, the egg hunt. A little chilly weather didn't stop the kids from taking part in the egg hunt. Hundreds of candy-filled eggs were spread out in the grass behind the Orient Center. Well, I like to make sure that everybody gets uh, an opportunity to hunt for eggs, so we do divide it down. We have um, ones and twos in one group, threes and fours in another group, and then the five and olders because they get a little bit more excited than the younger kids, so they're on their own. From the Orient Center, this is Rebecca Andrus reporting for ONTV News. On Wednesday, April 13th, representatives of Lake Orion Community Schools gathered at Blanche Sims Elementary for a ceremony marking the beginning of construction of a brand new school. Assistant Superintendent Heidi Mercer welcomed those in attendance and acknowledged those who helped make this project possible. The district also had a design team that worked on the design of Blanche Sims for approximately two years, starting with touring elementaries across the state to take note of what we wanted in our new elementary and what mistakes we did not want to make. This group worked tirelessly to ensure this new facility would meet the needs of our students and staff. Blanche Sims Elementary is the school district's northernmost school and the only school within the village of Lake Orion. Opened in September of 1950, the school was named after teacher Blanche Sims, who taught for 50 years. She passed away in 1947 and is buried in Evergreen Cemetery. On the morning of Saturday, April 23rd, dozens of volunteers assembled in Greens Park to begin working on a new playground structure. Organizers were hoping to complete the project in just one day. Um, well, it's an entire play structure, so we have got some climbing areas, some rope areas, some slides, so lots of different options for kids of multiple ages. Way back in the spring of 2021, DDA Director Molly Lalone notified the village of T-Mobile's hometown grant. The application was submitted in June, and in September, T-Mobile presented Lake Orion with a check for $50,000. You know, this is a really huge deal for us. Um, I've been on the Parks and Recreation Advisory Committee for probably nine years now, and we've never been able to complete a project of this size. So to have the generosity of T-Mobile and their hometown grant to be able to complete a project that we have just dreamed about for a long time, of having a, a structure here for kids of all ages, um, means a lot, to, especially to those who have served on the Parks Committee and have just put in so many hours working to try to make something fun happen here. On the morning of Saturday, April 23rd, volunteers were invited to come to Camp Agawam off of Clarkson Road to kick off the sixth annual Orion Green Up. Orion Township provided trash bags and maps of areas that needed attention. They even provided lunch and a t-shirt to those taking part. It's just an opportunity for the community to come out and take care of Orion, give us something back. So spring is upon us with this beautiful weather today and so what we do is People come in here, we assign projects throughout the community, give them trash bags, vests, and they just go pick up trash and take care of it. So. On the morning of Wednesday, May 4th, or what some people refer to as Star Wars Day, Orion Township Supervisor Chris Barnett took to the stage at Woodside Bible Church to recap the milestones and accomplishments that have taken place over the past year. Since the event fell on May 4th, the presentation had a Star Wars theme, complete with costume characters taking part in lightsaber battles. So our treasure is in our lakes. It's not even General Motors, no offense. It's the Orion family, it's the people, it's the people here, it's our community, it's everybody that makes Orion, Orion. On the afternoon of Wednesday, May 4th, representatives of the Chamber of Commerce as well as dignitaries from both the township and the village gathered at Live Cannabis on M24 to celebrate the dispensary's official grand opening with a ribbon cutting ceremony. The Lake Orion location opened its doors to the public on 420, of course, and is one of seven locations in Michigan. Traveling regional manager Jordan Felix described what a customer can expect upon visiting the dispensary. 
Basically, when you come in, you're going to be greeted by a great receptionist, and then they'll get you put in our queue, check your ID, verify your age. One of our bud tenders will come out, they'll walk you through our glass shop and let you, you know, look around a little bit, then take you into the bud room where you will make your purchase. So during that purchasing, they're going to find out why you're coming in, what your ailments are. Maybe you just want to relax. Maybe you got some pain relief that you're looking for. Maybe you just, you know, want to take the edge off for the day. Anything like that, then basically they prescribe you with whatever your needs are pretty much with the with the product and that comes from like edibles flour concentrates different different ways it's a different way for everybody to consume on saturday may 7th the line racers returned after a two-year absence attendees gathered at a new location this year boulder point golf club in oxford dozens of local businesses and nonprofits purchased wooden lions and decorated them for the big race. Large fuzzy dice determined which line would advance as attendees bet on the entries. The winning line received a medal at the finish line. Entry fees, bets, and raffles helped the Lions Club raise money to continue their charitable work in the community. On Saturday, May 14th, dozens of volunteers arrived at Children's Park in downtown Agorian to begin the process of replacing the previous playground structure with a brand new structure funded by the Lake Orion Downtown Development Authority. The playground equipment um, has been here for a while. It was starting to, um, we were not to an unsafe situation yet, but we were getting there. And uh, the Parks and Rec Committee came to the Lake Orion Downtown Development Authority Board and said, we need some help um, replacing all the equipment in the park. And the decision by the board was to fund this entirely. So it's over $78,000 of a community investment by the Lake Orion Downtown Development Authority to make sure that Children's Park remains a safe safe, shining star as it's always been in the community. On the morning of Sunday, May 15th, almost 200 runners and walkers arrived at the Orient Center for the start of the 2022 Dragon Dash 5K. At 9 a.m., participants lined up for the start of the race. It's a gorgeous day. It's beautiful out here. We've run this run in snow, horizontal rain. We've run it in anything. It's very rare that we get this much of a beautiful day. Orion Township has been hosting the Dragon Dash for more than 25 years. The course took participants onto the scenic Pollyann Trail where they headed south towards Civic Center Park. Upon reaching the park, they turned around and headed north back toward the finish line at the Orion Center where they received a medal for participating. On Saturday, May 21st and Sunday, May 22nd, the Lake Orion Flower and Art Fair returned to downtown Lake Orion. Flint and Broadway streets were closed to traffic as approximately 100 vendors set up shop offering art, plants, home decor, and more. Visitors also enjoyed food and music throughout the weekend. An early morning thunderstorm threatened to put a damper on things, but by Saturday afternoon, visitors enjoyed beautiful spring-like weather. When the, the monsoon came, we were all hunkered down, like very unsure of the day, but we went, had a bite to eat, and uh, before we could finish, the sun was out and the crowds were coming. We came back to our booth, we had kids waiting for crafts, we had people ready to pick up kids, and the turnout is great. The community and their support, regardless of the weather, is what keeps us going, so it's wonderful. Proceeds from the event and a beer tent helped support the Orion Art Center. It was the second year the Art Center organized the Flower and Art Fair, which was previously hosted by the Lake Orion DDA. On the morning of Sunday, May 22nd, Friendship Park was bustling with activity during Orion Township's inaugural Kicking for a Cause kickball tournament. Eight teams took part in the tournament that acted as a fundraiser for Miracle Field and its nearly completed concession stand. The winning team would take home $10,000 to benefit the charity of their choice. We raised about $20,000 and half of that's going to go to finish our concession stand. Uh, the other half is going to go to the winning team. Actually, the winning team gets $10,000 for whatever charity they choose. The second place team gets $2,500. And then we have a Team Spirit Award for $1,000. So the team that is exhibiting the best Team Spirit out here will, will, won't go home empty-handed. And then the big trophy is, is like the Stanley Cup. It's better than the Stanley Cup. And that team will get to keep it and all year long, keep that trophy, whatever they want to do with it. But next year, it'll be back. So it's going to obviously stay here. The tournament concluded with Bloomfield Township taking on Rochester Hills in the championship game. Bloomfield got on the scoreboard first to take a 1-0 lead in the second inning. 
but Rochester Hill scored two runs in the fourth to go out in front. At the top of the seventh and final inning, Rochester Hills was clinging on to a 3-1 lead when soccer great Allison Vizanko sends one over the heads of the outfielders to drive in two runs and extend the lead to four runs. Bloomfield Township had one last chance at the bottom of the seventh, but after the final out, it was Rochester Hills claiming the championship with a 5-1 victory. Bloomfield Township received the second place prize of $2,500 and the Simcock team received a check for $1,000 for most spirit. Then Orion Township Supervisor Chris Barnett presented the championship trophy and a check to his brother, $10,000 to Mayor Brian Barnett and the Rochester Hills team who then made a stunning announcement. We have an important announcement. First of all, thank you all for, uh, for coming out tonight. And our captains have an announcement. So, Orion, we appreciate you having us here today. And what we would like to do is donate this money back to you. It was awesome. Our team, Rochester Hills, we had 18, 20 people out here playing all day and probably three times that number of fans on a Sunday. So we have a great culture in Rochester Hills, and uh, this is going to be pretty fun to bring home and talk about this year. On the morning of May 30th, more than 300 runners and walkers gathered near Children's Park in downtown Orion for the start of the 6th annual Orion Veterans Memorial Day 5K and 5 mile run. At 9 a.m., those taking part in the 5 mile run lined up at the start and followed a course that took them onto Pink Creek Trail and across the Van Tassel Pedestrian Bridge. And just a few minutes later, 5K participants lined up to begin the next phase of the event. This is our sixth year. And we really started this as a fundraiser uh, for the Orion Veterans Memorial, uh, Jenny and I. Uh, but it's kind of grown into more than that. It's kind of a celebration of America. Immediately following the race, representatives of the American Legion post 233 gathered in Children's Park for a ceremony and rifle salute. Ladies Auxiliary President Sandy Boyd tossed a wreath into the waters of Pink Creek to honor those who lost their lives at sea. The ceremony followed an earlier ceremony that took place in East Lawn Cemetery on Orion Road, where many veterans are buried. At 11 a.m., the streets of downtown Lake Orion were closed to traffic as spectators lined up along Flint and Broadway for the Memorial Day Parade. It was the first time the parade passed through the village since 2019. Leading the way was the police department's 1941 Ford police car, which was carrying 2022's honored veteran, who was introduced to the crowd by Police Chief Harold Rossman. United States Marine Corps Gunnery Sergeant Todd DeKinderen is a Lake Orion High School graduate of the class of 2003. Community groups and military vehicles left Blanche Sims Elementary School to make their way down Flint Street before turning right on Broadway toward the Eamon Center. Bringing up the rear was the Lake Orion High School marching band. At 1 p.m., veterans and members of the community gathered at the Orion Veterans Memorial on M24 for the final event of the day. Board Chairman and U.S. Army veteran Dr. Joseph Mastro Mateo welcomed those in attendance and introduced Professor John Todd of Rochester College. A Vietnam veteran, Professor Todd was wounded in action, costing him his eyesight. The ceremony concluded with a gun salute and the playing of taps. On Saturday, June 4th, the Friends of the Pink Creek Trail hosted the Tour de Trail in the parking lot near Children's Park in downtown Lake Orion. Numerous vendors took part in an expo that offered products and information to walkers, runners, and bikers, and visitors enjoyed food and refreshments. The expo was free to the public, but t-shirt sales and an organized bike ride acted as a fundraiser for the Friends of the Pink Creek Trail. On a sunny Saturday, June 4th, more than 30 vendors set up in the parking lot of the Orion Center for Orion Township's community garage sale. The event was free to visitors looking for a deal on clothing, home decor, furniture, and more. And Shred It was on the grounds to shred and recycle sensitive documents. It's really just a community event for everyone to come out and enjoy and have fun and be outdoors. On a rainy Sunday, June 5th, a group of about 100 people gathered at Evergreen Cemetery in Lake Orion to honor a very special Lake Orion citizen. Blanche Sims taught in Orion schools for 50 years and was a member of Orion High School's class of 1895. Blanche Sims Elementary School was named in her honor when it opened its doors in 1950. 
Blanche was a founding member of the John Crawford chapter of the Daughters of the American Revolution, which celebrates its 105th year of existence. We are here to honor Blanche Sims, one of our founding members. She was one of 20 women who were ahead of their time and saw a need uh, to do volunteerism in their community and in the state. And they followed the guidelines of the National Society of the Daughters of the American Revolution. On the evening of Thursday, June 9th, 534 seniors gathered at Pine Knot Music Theater in Clarkston for Lake Orion High School's Class of 22 graduation ceremony. Principal Stephen Hawley welcomed the students and their family members and introduced the faculty in attendance. Speeches were made by Board President Jim Wheatman and Superintendent Ben Kirby, and seniors Paige Walker and Kyla Carson delivered student messages. After the final senior crossed the stage, Student Leadership President Kyla Carson returned to the stage to lead his classmates in the tassel ceremony. Please move your tassel from the right to the left. Congratulations, Dragon. We have now graduated. On Saturday, June 11th, the Orion Township Library invited the community to come out for the kickoff of their summer reading program. Perfect weather plus family-friendly games and activities attracted a record turnout. We're kicking off our summer reading program, so kids can come, kids, adults, and teens. This is the first day they can pick up that um, game board that allows them to win prizes and earn <coughs> uh, fun things just for reading and reading for fun. On a beautiful summer Saturday morning, June 18th, Friendship Park in Orion Township was bustling with activity as the community came together to celebrate the grand opening of the home plate concession stand. Place is, uh, it's a miracle and it's magical. It's, it's literally the best day of the week every time I'm out here. I mean, it's. And then today just exceeded expectations. I mean, the perfect, most incredible baseball weather, not too hot, amazing crowd. And we received a $100,000 check that put us within $40,000 of totally completing the project. We're at almost over a million dollars total project and it's been all donated. I mean, just incredible day. Spectators who visit the park can now enjoy hot dogs, nachos, and refreshments while helping to raise funds for Miracle Field. The building, now named Andrea Yatuma's home plate concession stand, will employ staff with special needs. Well, it's a partnership. The concessions uh, is a partnership with Easter Seals, just like the field is. And they're going to staff it, and it's going to be open not just for Miracle League games, but for our baseball season, soccer season. And the, and the proceeds will help to keep this going. But the really special part about the concession stand is we're going to be hiring people with special needs, people that might be overlooked. We're going to teach job skills here. So it's like it's the miracle keeps, keeps giving. It's, it's incredible. Literally the best project I've ever worked on in my life, and it's right here in our community. The Lake Orion Lions Club's annual jubilee kicked off on Thursday, June 23rd, and ran through Sunday, June 26th. The streets of downtown Lake Orion were closed to traffic as Skirbeck Entertainment Group returned to set up the rides, games, and food that bring in families from throughout Oakland County. We've been doing using Skirbeck for, I don't know, 15 years at least, something like that. And uh, they just do a great job for us and everybody does well. Uh, kids have fun. We make, some, you know, we make money because of the carnival and getting people downtown. The businesses are successful because they've got a big crowd gathered around their place. And, uh, it, you know, every, it's, it's a win for everybody. A lot of fun. We make a lot of money to help out the community and uh, just, just really enjoy ourselves down here. For many, the highlight of the weekend was the fireworks show over the lake. Ace Pyro returned to launch the fireworks from a barge anchored between Park Island and Pelton's Point. Families from all over Oakland County began to gather along M24 and the shores of Lake Orion for the best vantage point. Greens Park was packed with families as the sun went down. At precisely 10 p.m., the first firework was launched from the barge. The show lasted approximately 15 minutes and ended with a spectacular finale that had spectators cheering. 
On the evening of Thursday, June 23rd, Orion Township hosted its annual Summer Sizzle event on the grounds of the Orion Center. Orion area families enjoyed inflatables, games, free hot dogs, and refreshments, and even a movie. And the always popular Guy Lewis and his Chautauqua Express entertained the crowd with live music. It was free. Everything is free. Free parking, free admission, free hot dogs, free bounce houses, free face painting. Everything is free. That's the best thing about Summer Sizzle is everything is for the families. It's free. How is that possible? How is that possible? Well, through our supporters, which I don't have memorized, but I could list them all off. Um, we have our supporters. We're millage funded, so we use some of our millage dollars. Um, we just make it happen. And the biggest supporter, one of the biggest supporters is the First Baptist Church because they are out here with... They must have 30, 40 volunteers. They're grilling the hot dogs. They're running the carnival games. We could not do it without their support and their volunteers. One week later, residents that live on the shores of Lake Orion took part in another longtime Lake Orion tradition. In 1945, the local Rotary Club began Flare Night as a celebration of the end of World War II. Decades later, the Lake Orion Lions Club continued the tradition as a fundraiser for the organization. In the weeks leading up to the event, rote flares could be purchased at several local businesses. As the sun set on Friday, July 1st, Lake residents began lighting up their property. The flares stayed lit for approximately 30 minutes and were a pretty spectacular sight. The following day, spectators returned to Lake Orion to find a prime viewing spot for what we'd like to call Fireworks 2.0. Families lined up along M24 and Philip Greens Park and Pelton's Point on the lake. Sponsored by the Lake Orion Fireworks Foundation, Ace Pyro was back at it, towing a barge out to a safe distance. As the sun went down, the first firework was launched just after 10 p.m. The show ran approximately 25 minutes, thrilling those who came to see one of the best fireworks shows in the state. On the evening of Wednesday, July 20th, Palazzo de Bacci in Orient Township hosted the opening ceremony for the 2022 International Invitational Bocce Tournament. 20 players representing 10 countries were introduced to the crowd and the media in attendance, and each team was escorted by members of the Power Company Kids Club in Pontiac. Putting an event like this together, having 10 countries come from afar, safe and sound, was a task in itself, so we are thrilled they're here. We went through an invitation process. We wanted to pick the best players from afar to be here for a very fierce competition applying international rules, which is a little different than most people come here to Plaza and want to play socially. These players here are the best of the best, and they all are wanting to win our grand prize, which I don't even know if I mentioned, it's $10,000 for the first place prize. He missed. It's game. Italy comes back. A fantastic game against San Marino. 15-10. Couldn't ask for better matches here. San Marino wins the very first game of the doubles, and Italy comes back winning two in a row. And with that, Italy claimed the title at the 2022 tournament as well as the $10,000 grand prize. San Marino finished second, earning a $6,000 payday. Team USA finished third and Chile fourth, netting $2,000 each. And Canada and Austria finished fifth and sixth respectively, earning $1,000 each. On Wednesday, July 27th, the village of Lake Orion hosted an open house in the council chambers to celebrate the retirement of outgoing village manager, Joe Young. Visitors enjoyed food donated by local restaurants and colleagues presented him with gifts and wished him well in his future endeavors. It's overwhelming to think that I made that much difference in those people's lives that they would feel, feel so compiled, felt to come and show their appreciation to me because I appreciate them. So like I said earlier, you get what you give. You give love and attention and concern for other people, you will get it back. And you suddenly need more of that in this world. So it was very, very nice of everybody to show up. And I'm glad I made a difference. So, uh, and I'll keep doing that. 
Joe has uh, really spent a lot of time here, extra time servicing our community. He's been uh, uh, a hero in many ways and a teacher and uh, has done a good job for us and we wish him the best in his uh, recovery and with his retirement. The annual music festival known as Tommy's Talk kicked off on the evening of Friday, July 29th with a performance by Bernadette Catherine and the Lonely Days Band. They were the first of six bands to perform at the Fire Bowl on Friday and Saturday with more live music over at the Tiki Bar Tent. So we've got tons of vendors, there's merchandise for sale, we've got excellent food trucks, frozen drinks at the Tiki Bar, live music at the Tiki Bar, uh, the beach is open, it's a family friendly event so uh, mom and dad can maybe have a frozen margarita while the kids are, are in, in, uh, enjoying the lake. Tommy's Dot gets its name from Tommy's Lake, which campers can access from the beach at Camp Agawam. The music festival allows the friends of Camp Agawam to make ongoing improvements to Orion Township's hidden gem. On Sunday, the Tiki Bar area and the beach are turned over to the Real Men of Orion campaign and their annual Boobs, Tubes and Dudes event. Ticket sales, donations and sponsorships raise money for the American Cancer Society to help those battling breast cancer and their families. That same weekend, the streets of downtown Lagorian were closed to traffic as classic cars, hot rods, and muscle cars lined the streets of Flint and Broadway. The weather was perfect for this popular event, which provided plenty of photo ops in front of the village's historic buildings. We had cars here at 6.30 in the morning lined up ready to go. We weren't even set up. Uh, I'm pickle pink. We got 100 cars that at least registered, uh, probably more, and everybody's excited. Everybody's come up and said, hey, this is a great venue, um, and I think people are, are gung, gung for it. And I think the fact is of that we're doing this for the police department's Cops for Kids program even, even is a better that way. But yeah, this is, this is a favorite one for me too, because of the setting. Yeah, describe the environment, the setting, the photo opportunity. Well, down here, because the, the village itself is historical, it, it's a better way for these guys if they want to take a picture of the car because you know, they're in a building that's been around for 100 years and it's just not sitting in a field, not sitting on a hot parking lot. And they can sit in the shade, they can go into the stores and shop, do things like that, so hopefully the businesses appreciate it. Hopefully the restaurants, I know we were, they did really, really well at uh, Johnny Black's this morning and thank you to them and their staff for doing the all-you-can-eat pancake breakfast and sausage, so I, I'm, I'm totally happy with everything going on right now. On the evening of Friday, August 5th, Orion Township hosted its annual Big Rig Gig event at Friendship Park. Families came from far and wide so the little ones could climb into vehicles of all shapes and sizes. Based on the turnout, the 2022 Big Rig Gig just might be the township's biggest event yet. I think in our post-COVID world, people just want to be outside and they want to be around other people and they want to be normal and everybody came out today. Everybody, all the people are here today. The road commission came out in force. They brought about eight vehicles. Um, some of the usual, some of the new, the parks crew brought out um, everything that we have full force. Uh, the schools came out. It's just, it's a lot of the same, but it's a lot of the same that brought new trucks. Dragon on the Lake kicked off on the evening of Thursday, August 25th with the opening of the Dragon Pub and Live Entertainment and ran through Sunday, August 28th. On Friday, the streets of Broadway and Flint were closed to traffic for the Merchant Market. Dozens of vendors set up shop offering art, jewelry, food, clothing and more throughout the weekend. The Tiki Bar on Anderson and Front Street opened to the public and visitors enjoyed more live music at the Dragon Pub. Uh, Orient Art Center is a nonprofit, and we just love spreading art into the community and this is the biggest fundraiser for us and it helps us continue to bring classes to um, troops, birthday parties for your little ones. We have a full fall schedule for our pottery studio and our painting studio um, and all that's online. Um, I think we have a different class every day of the week and these events help us bring our instructors in and help keep the cost affordable so we can offer art to people of all different you know ages and economic levels to be able to participate in those classes. 
On Friday night, boaters gathered at the Lake Orion Boat Club to register for the return of the lighted boat parade. After a two-year hiatus, a boaters once again were encouraged to decorate their boats with lights and festive decorations. At 9 p.m., the fire-breathing dragon returned to lead the parade around the perimeter of the lake. A panel of judges traveled alongside the parade to determine which boats were the best decorated. The top three received cash prizes donated by Racy's Extreme of the Pier. On Sunday morning, approximately 200 paddlers representing 10 teams gathered in Greens Park for the Dragon Boat Races. Defending champs, the Bernie Directive did not return for the 2022 competition, so the Dragon Cup trophy was up for grabs this year. Things kicked off with an opening ceremony, and by 10 a.m., the first Dragon Boats were paddling out to the starting line on the far side of the lake. Every team took part in three heats throughout the day. After the times were tabulated from the first two heats, it was determined that Team Mosheri, Dragon Down Parkinson's, and 2017 champion BYT Fitness would race against each other in the final race of the day to determine the 2022 champion. Team Mosheri is in lane one on the left, BYT is in the middle, and DDP is in lane three on the right. Here's how it played out. Wow, this is very impressive. Finish there. Nice job. That temple just got a little bit larger with the crowning jewel of the Dragon Trophy. Bravo, team. You guys were awesome. Give me a B. Give me a Y. Y. Give me a T. 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 B-Y-T. T. B-Y-T. T. B-Y-T. T. B-Y-T. Yeah, today it was today was awesome. Um, we not having the Bernie directive of five-time champions in the mix, the energy of the teams they knew they were someone new was going home with the trophy, and uh, so uh, they came to lay it all down on the water today. Myers was a corporate sponsor for the event. Uh, welcome, we welcomed them to our town, and uh, you know they came and. Uh, donated the carnations for the uh, carnation festival uh, for the cancer survivor festival among just being the major sponsor uh, in for the event I, I this has been one of the best dragon on the lakes to date 13 years we've been racing dragon boats 13 years on the evening of friday september 9th the oxford wildcats hosted the lake orion dragons in the annual battle for the double o trophy which oxford took home last year after a win at dragon stadium both teams headed into the game with a one-and-one -one record, hoping to snag a win in the OAA Red Division. The Dragons kicked off to the Wildcats, and with Dominic Cassis under center, Oxford's first drive of the game ate up most of the entire first quarter. The Wildcats ended up settling for a field goal, and the Dragons began their first drive with less than three minutes left in the quarter. In the second quarter, the Dragons began a drive that culminated with a 15-yard rushing touchdown from sophomore quarterback T.R. Hill, and the Dragons take the lead 7-3 with less than 10 minutes left in the first half. The Dragons' defense held the Wildcats at bay, and with the game winding down, Lake Orion padded their lead with a 20-yard scamper from quarterback T.R. Hill. A face mask penalty was declined. The extra point was good, and the game ended with a 28-10 victory for the Dragons with the double O trophy, returning to the Lake Orion High School trophy case for a year. I caught up with head coach Chris Bell after the game. Rivalry game, obviously. Um, so a lot of, you know, community bragging rights, you know, it's good for our guys. Our guys know their year, they brought the trophy home. Um, but it's always, they're always hard fought. I mean, Oxford played a heck of a game. They're tough as can be. They're well coached, uh, gave us some problems. I'm just proud of my kids and how resilient they were. They hung in there, they kept playing, and they got the job done. On Saturday, September 10th, Lake Orion residents were encouraged to don their lederhosen and come out to DDA's second annual Oktoberfest. The parking lot near Children's Park was closed off as visitors arrived to enjoy food, games, music, and lots and lots of beer. In just two short years, Oktoberfest has become the DDA's largest fundraiser of the year, and not only does the DDA benefit, but other local nonprofit organizations benefit as well. 
The Orion Veterans Memorial was the site of an emotional ceremony that not only remembered the lives lost on 9-11, but also honored the brave first responders who charged into dangerous situations on a regular basis. Former Orion Township Fire Chief Bob Smith welcomed those in attendance and invited speakers to share their memories of the day that changed the world. The ceremony came to a close with a powerful message from Pastor Dave Gerber, who acts as chaplain for the Oxford Police Department. Remind us that the things that divide us are not insurmountable, that we can overcome, we can be united, and we can make the world a better place so we don't need another memorial and we don't need another family saying goodbye to a loved one. What's going on, Alabalooza? On Saturday, September 17th, Orion Township's Wildwood Amphitheater was the site of Alabalooza, an all-day family-friendly music festival that acts as a fundraiser for the Daisy Project Michigan. Beginning at noon, solo acts and bands performed throughout the day, including One Ton Trolley, Levi Bootcut, and the Straight Legs, the Gasoline Gypsies, and the 2XL Band. Vendors could be found on the grounds, and visitors enjoyed a variety of food and refreshments. There was even a cornhole tournament sponsored by Motor City Cornhole. The money raised at the annual event helps make the community more accessible for those with special needs. So all the money that we raise for the DAISY project goes directly back into the community and we believe that um, fun is universal and that inclusion is expected. So we're doing things to make the world and recreational spaces more accessible for people with special needs because we want to make sure that everybody can have fun and play. On the evening of Saturday, September 17th, Ed's Broadway Gift and Costume in downtown Gorion was a gathering place for the ninth annual Zombie Walk. Several people arrived early to have some gory makeup applied. As the sun went down, approximately 50 creepy characters could be seen loitering at Flint and Broadway, attracting the attention of pedestrians and drivers passing by. <laughs> at 8 p.m., the zombie horde began their march across Flint Street toward the first stop of the night, Pork and Pint Restaurant located on Broadway Street near Chadbolt. Well, we uh, started out as a birthday party for me my birthday September 13th and then um, we just decided that Kathy asked me what I wanted for my birthday and I said well why don't we do a zombie walk and so that's how it all started we just put it together and we raised money for the Christmas parade group and uh, you know it's a lot of fun <laughs> on the morning of Sunday September 18th dozens of congregants from Lake Orion United Methodist Church gathered at the intersection of Lapeer and Flint Street for the start of a procession that celebrated the 150th anniversary of the church. The cornerstone was laid in 1872 and the church was dedicated on June 14, 1873 on the property currently occupied by AutoZone, but in 1901 the church was moved to its present location due to the close proximity of the railroad. On Sunday, the current congregation came together to recreate that event using a miniature replica of the church. Oh, it's great to see everyone, and we were so fortunate to be able to get a hold of um, so many past pastors. We have seven pa past pastors here today, and um, that's absolutely wonderful um, because there are a number of us who are a little older, and um, it's, it's a kind of a reunion. At, at a real appropriate time at 150 years. <laughs> On Saturday, September 24th, the Lake Orion community was invited to come out to Camp Agawam for the Fall Festival of Family Fun. The threat of rain early on did not discourage families from coming out and the turnout was tremendous. People showed up at 1045 in the rain. They were ready to go. <laughs> they were not scared of the rain at all and it turned out beautiful, so it's good. This is an amazing park for um, to have in our system. Um, it's very untouched. It's rustic. The you know it's a really great fall atmosphere here. Um, even in the summertime, it's a beautiful place to go. It's kind of a hidden gem in Orion Township. Um, when we took ownership of it a couple years ago, we wanted to keep it a large green space, and that is our goal to not build anything on it, but just maintain it as a park and um, a piece of beautiful land. The rain transitioned to a perfect full day, and visitors enjoyed a petting zoo, crafts, inflatables, food, and music. A hay wagon ride took families to a pumpkin patch where the little ones were able to grab a fall souvenir. 
And thanks to the voter-approved parks millage, the entire event was free to the community. On the afternoon of Sunday, October 2nd, Lake Orion residents lined the streets of the downtown area for the annual homecoming parade. Participants gathered at Blanche Sims Elementary School before heading out on Florence Street. The parade traveled west on Flint Street, then turned north on Broadway before coming to an end at the Eamon Center. The police department's 1941 Ford police car led the way, with representatives of all of Lake Orion schools following behind. Student groups, athletes, and of course the marching band were greeted with cheers from the enthusiastic crowd. The homecoming court was introduced by student advisor Lori Hogan with one lucky couple hoping to be crowned king and queen during Friday night's football game. The three and three Lake Orion Dragons took to the field to host the four and two Clarkston Wolves for the homecoming game. At halftime, student advisor Lori Hogan introduced the homecoming court to the crowd. Last year's king and queen Jackson Ben and Paige Walker returned to Dragon Stadium to crown the 2022 king and queen. Ladies and gentlemen, please get your cameras ready. Jackson, will you please crown King Nick News? And Paige, will you do us the honors and please crown the homecoming queen, Grace Sullivan? Ladies and gentlemen, congratulations to all of our participants and their honors and families. We are proud to call you all Dragons, and we're proud that you represent us as a community in school. We're thankful for all the pride you've given us and the joy you bring. Again, a warm round of applause for all of our 2022 homecoming court members and their families. On Thursday, October 6th, Orion Township dignitaries, including members of the Corridor Improvement Authority Board, gathered on a parcel of land located near the intersection of Jocelyn and Brown Road. The group was celebrating the completion of a landscaping project that greets travelers as they travel north into Orion Township from Auburn Hills. Big smile. Three, two, one, cut! <laughs> This gateway beautification project is the result of a $25,000 grant from Canadian National Railway and administered by American and Bloom. Orion Township Chief of Staff Samantha Temko submitted the grant request last year and was notified that Orion Township was one of 10 recipients in the spring of 2022. On the evening of Friday, October 14th, the Orion Center was the site of Orion Township's annual Voo Bash. Families pre-registered for two time slots at 5.30 and 7.30. Inside, visitors enjoyed cider and snacks, games, face painting, photo opportunities, and waste management sponsored some creepy crawly creatures courtesy of the Leslie Science and Nature Center out of Ann Arbor. Outdoors, local businesses and organizations set up trick-or-treat stations, and a hay wagon took passengers for a short ride to a pumpkin patch near the Polly Ann Trail. On Wednesday, October 19th, the Lake Orion community descended on Children's Park in the village for the DDA's annual Halloween extravaganza. This longtime Lake Orion tradition started out as a parade down Broadway, but was forced to adapt when the pandemic arrived in 2020. Now families visit approximately 25 trick-or-treat stations set up throughout the park, where local businesses and organizations hand out candy and gifts. The DDA provided cider and donuts, and a DJ spun some spooky tunes. It's now a match. Well, I mean, Halloween and family-friendly activities has been a tradition for Lake Orion. Um, this particular tradition um, has grown out of Lake Orion growing up and becoming more busy. Um, we used to be able to be quiet enough that we could um, send the kids down the middle of the street safely. And, uh, and now it's not as safe to do that. So we decided to have them come and parade around in the park. And we've got arrows all over the place. Just follow the arrows. That'll help um, keep everybody moving um, smoothly. The community really came together to make this event possible with volunteers helping out, businesses donating candy, and of course the sponsors. On the evening of Saturday, October 22nd, downtown diners may have been surprised to spot a coven of witches gathered on a street corner. There was no cause for alarm. The women were just taking part in Witches' Night, a fun event created by the Oxford DDA to encourage local shopping and dining. 
It was the first time Lake Orion took part in the event. All these shops have specials going on, drink specials, discounts. You're going to want to come down here and we're going to say thank you to Berkshire Hathaway Home Services, Key Realty, Megan Spencer for sponsoring this evening. I see all kinds of witches hats and capes and beautiful, you know, makeup. It's a lot of fun. A trolley appeared every 20 minutes to transport participants to Oxford and back. Things were jumping in downtown Oxford and the real men of Oxford were offering photo ops in their inflatable pink chair. It's so amazing. Like I said, I just joined, so this is my first witches' night, and I am thrilled to see, after all of the work and the planning that Kelly and I have done with, for this event, to see so many ladies and men that have come downtown dressed up, participating in the specials, shopping in the businesses, visiting the restaurants. is wonderful. On the evening of Wednesday, October 26, aspiring filmmakers, family, and friends arrived at the GQT Oxford 7 Theater for ONTV's annual Wildwood Film Festival. Now in its ninth year, eight short films were submitted and scrutinized by a panel of judges. All of the submissions were shown on the big screen and cash prizes were handed out for first, second, and third place finishers. The event also acted as a fundraiser for the North Oakland Community Coalition. Uh, this year was a little down on the number of submissions, but we have to say the quality of the submissions this year really took a leap forward, uh, especially from the high school students at Lake Orion High School. They really, really showed their talent and their technical skills, and uh, one even took an award home. So we're really pleased with the turnout. Uh, again, ONTV always partners with a charity on events like this, and uh, North Oakland Community Coalition, o NOCC, is our charity uh, this year, so we're glad to support, uh, support them as well. And the winner of the 2022 Wildwood Film Festival was Overtime, <laughs> produced by Calvin Green and Vincent Martacci of Cine Films. I just really, like you said, it's amazing seeing our films on a screen. It's really great being able to participate in an event like this too. Like you say, like not a lot of people have the opportunity to do this. It's not a super accessible thing. We just did the 48 hour film festival this year and you know, it's not as accessible as something like this. So it's really cool being able to see all these different films from all these different community members that you wouldn't expect to be in a film. On the evening of Saturday, November 5th, Malasha's Palace was the site of the Lions Club, a Christmas for everyone charity dinner and auction. After a two-year hiatus due to the COVID-19 pandemic, attendees seemed excited to be back to support the fundraiser. It's almost like falling off a bike, you always remember. Uh, just trying to get back into the flow of everything. It's been way too long, um, but uh, I think by the, based on what the crowd we have this year, it's going to be a fantastic night, and I really hope everybody enjoys themselves and have, just has a great time. Attendees enjoyed a buffet dinner courtesy of Metamora Golf and Country Club Fairway Catering. There was a live auction, wine pool, cookie sales, and a silent auction was replaced by a bucket raffle with tables of prizes donated by local businesses and organizations. On Tuesday, November 8th, voters went to the polls to determine the outcome of several races during the midterm election, including Michigan Governor, Lake Orion Village Council, Board of Education, and several proposals. Statewide, approximately 4.5 million of Michigan's 8.2 million registered voters participated in the election, including 1.8 million absentee ballots cast. State officials announced it was Michigan's highest turnout ever in a midterm election. In Orion Township, voter turnout was high, with 70 percent of registered voters casting ballots in some precincts. Results started trickling in soon after the polls closed at 8 p.m. In the race for governor, incumbent Gretchen Whitmer held off challenger Tudor Dixon with 54.47% of the votes. Democrat Whitmer received 2,422,624 votes to Republican Dixon's 1,954,311 to earn another four-year term. Democrats also took control of Michigan's House and Senate for the first time in nearly 40 years. Lake Orion voters were asked to fill four vacancies on the Village Council. Newcomer Nancy Moshear received the most votes with 639. Incumbent Teresa Rutt received 544 votes. Carl Sarowski received 502 votes. And current President Ken Van Portfleet received 496 votes. Incumbents Douglas Hobbs and Bradley Matheson were not re-elected. Five candidates competed to fill three vacancies on the Lake Orion Board of Education. Receiving the most votes was newcomer Heather Sanawi with 9,619. 
Incumbents Stephen Dracos and Jake Singer were reelected. Board President Jim Weedman, whose term ends in December, chose not to run for reelection. Voters in Orion Township chose to renew the Parks and Recreation Millage that went into effect in 2018. The renewal passed with 11,686 yes votes to 7,555 no votes. On the evening of Thursday, November 17th, the community gathered in Children's Park in downtown Corian for the DDA's annual Sing and Stroll and Tree Lighting Ceremony. As visitors arrived at the park, they enjoyed hot cocoa and cookies, music and dance routines, and holiday stories, courtesy of the Orion Township Public Library. Families were even able to take a horse-drawn carriage ride through the streets of downtown. Then, at around 6 p.m., Santa and Mrs. Claus joined Business Person of the Year Wayne Haney of Haney Farm Bureau to throw the switch to light up the Christmas tree to officially kick off the holiday season. Five, five, four, four three, three, two, two one. Hey! Merry Christmas, everyone! On Thursday, December 1st, the Orion Area Chamber of Commerce hosted its annual Impact Awards at Paint Creek Country Club. Chamber members enjoyed a nice lunch while honoring its board members and ambassadors. The ceremony was the first major event for the Chamber's new president and CEO, Joyce Donaldson, a Shelby Township native who brings nearly two decades of experience to the position. She was with the Romeo Washington Township Chamber for seven years before spending 12 years in California. She returned to Michigan on November 1st and began her role with the Orient Chamber on November 7th. I love this event. It was my first major event um, here at the Orion Area Chamber and it was great to be able to meet and greet uh, over a hundred of our members and of course to honor all those people that went above and beyond. Our chamber members are so extraordinary and it's just this golden opportunity today to be able to honor them and it's with my great pleasure and gratitude that I'm able to um, host an event like this for the Orion Area Chamber. And named 2022's Business Person of the Year was Jimmy Johnson of Graphic Takeover. The award was sponsored by Golling Buick GMC. My media reaction was, wow, that's, that's amazing, because I never would have thought I'd be nominated for something like this, uh, an award like this. Uh, I mean, we just, we just work hard every day and, and try to make as many people happy, put a smile on their faces one way or another. <laughs> On the evening of Friday, December 2nd, the Who's Who of Lake Orion gathered at Gollum Buick GMC for the annual Holly Jolly Folly. Those in attendance enjoyed a buffet dinner courtesy of Italia Gardens. Christmas music was provided by Rock and Ronnie and the Lake Orion High School Choir. Ticket sales and a silent auction helped raise money for the Orion Lighted Christmas Parade. We work on this continuously, getting different things together, silent auction prizes and such, and then the committee works on the parade. They do a fantastic job. It's a tireless job, but it's also one that um, we all love to do. And I don't think any of us would not do it. Merry Christmas! <laughs> 24 hours later, residents lined the streets of downtown Lake Orion for the start of the Orion Lighted Parade. Participants assembled at Blanchstone's Elementary School and made their way onto Flint Street at 6 p.m. The police department's 1941 police car led the way as the parade turned onto Anderson Street, Front Street, then north on Broadway, right through the heart of downtown. Seventy registered entries included local businesses and community organizations, as well as marching bands and dance groups. Plus, 40 to 50 costume characters passed by the main stage where Gowling Butte GMC's John Cooper and Rockin' Ronnie provided the commentary. And of course, Santa and Mrs. Claus were at the rear of the parade to officially usher in the holiday season. I think it means the kickoff. I think it means the kickoff to the holiday season. It's a couple hours where you can go there, stand there, hopefully you don't freeze, but you, you, your mind's away from what's going on in the world. I mean, we had tragedy last year and we did the parade um, and we thought that it helped a lot. And we believe that a lot of people look forward to the parade to start their holiday season. Oh, you're very kind. Merry Christmas to everyone. Thank you, Santa. Thanks for coming back to Lake Orion. We love you. Merry Christmas. Merry Christmas to you. 
On the morning of Saturday, December 10th, families travel to Whoville, otherwise known as the Orient Center, for the township's seventh annual breakfast with the Grinch event. Children enjoyed a meal of green eggs and ham and washed it down with some green Grinch juice. They were able to mix together some reindeer food, write letters to Santa, and create colorful craft projects. The 2018 animated version of the Grinch played on the screens, and of course, the little ones were able to get a photo opportunity with the mean one himself. This is um, it's a very jolly, fun, um, kind of kooky um, atmosphere here today. We um, are trying to go for a Whoville, you know, themed Christmas. So the decorations a little over the top, a little um, outrageous, but it's it's all in good fun. On the evening of Thursday, December 8th, dozens of law enforcement and first responders arrived at Meyer in Oxford to make sure area children have a memorable Christmas. Shop with a Hero paired up with representatives of the Oxford Police Department and Oakland County Sheriff's Office with local families. Donations from local businesses and individuals help make the event possible. Actually, Meyer started this like 20 years ago. Uh, they started out with having Shop with a Hero, a couple of kids at a time. So over time, over the last 20 years, uh, us, the Fire Department, the Sheriff's Department, did some fundraisers and got some more money together so we can have more than just a couple of kids and it's bloomed into uh, this large of an event every year and because of Meyer um, and setting that platform for us we're all able to do that. Less than a week later the Lake Orion Police Department gathered at the Target store on Brown Road for an event of their own although on a slightly smaller scale. 15 kids from Blanche Sims Elementary School were paired up with police officers and given a $150 gift card to spend in the store. This is the thing that we all look for every year because to see the smiles on the kids' faces um, when they're actually picking out something for them, it, it's, that's long, lifelong, la lasting. Uh, it's something that I, I get goosebumps just talking about. It, so. On Friday, December 16th, members of the Lake Orion Lions Club were joined by volunteers of all ages to sort and box up food donations for local families in need. Lake Orion students have been collecting non-perishable food items for weeks, in addition to toys, hats, gloves, and more. Um, it's been absolutely amazing. We have um, volunteers from all over the community that came to sort cans and and uh, non-perishable items to get ready for the Christmas baskets. And uh, we had the superintendent of schools, we had children from about two up, and we had seniors that needed to have a walker or cane to, to move around. And then we also brought in the special needs kids that came from Pine Tree uh, Center. It was pretty exciting, the, the breadth and depth of the people that came today. On the morning of Sunday, December 18th, approximately 200 runners and walkers arrived at the Orion Center for the start of Orion Township's annual Snow Dash 5K. Participants of all ages gathered at the starting line and at approximately 9 a.m. the race was underway. Uh, the conditions are fantastic. Um, we were a little caught off guard. We weren't supposed to get any snow, but here it is. It's a snow dash and it's snowing. Um, the course is being gravel is in beautiful shape. I had the guys go out and check for any standing water in the last couple of days to make sure we didn't have any icy conditions out there. Um, it's, it's beautiful out there. It's a beautiful day to be on the trail. The course itself, it's a 5K uh, on the Pollyann Trail. Starts and ends here at the Orient Center. It goes down, crosses over Green Shield, crosses over Scripps, loops around, and comes back. So it's an out and back. Beautiful course, nice flat, no hills, gorgeous. On the evening of Monday, December 19th, Orient Township officials gathered at Township Hall to say goodbye to longtime trustee and Township Treasurer Donnie Steele. Steele was elected to the Michigan House in November to represent the newly formed District 54, which includes Orient Township, Auburn Hills, Bloomfield Hills, Bloomfield Township, and Oakland Township. Steele is a lifelong Orient Township resident and got involved with local government when she joined the Safety Path Committee in 2008. She served as a township trustee for four years and township treasurer for the past five years. She looked back at the township's major accomplishments over the past decade. Well, this building for one, all the great safety paths that we've put in all over town, um, the new police station, Baldwin Road, all the Corridor Improvement Authority, Brown Road, Lapeer Road was redone, um, a lot of new development, a lot of new development up and down like Gregory and Squirrel, and good development too, so um, 
it's it's got a new Orion's got a new face from what it did 10 years ago. I mean, she's given more than 10 years, but the last 10 years serving on our board and then for the last six as our township treasurer. But it's more than that for her. She was always all in. I mean, whether it was an event she was involved in, I mean, she was everything parks and trails. So Polly Ann and the Paint Creek, she was, I think, pretty much every single meeting of those two trail commissions for the last, I think, 10 years. But more than that, I mean, every community event, whether it was something going on at the memorial, fundraisers, Donnie Steele, her heart and soul bleeds. Orion Township. The Township Board meeting on December 19th was the last one for the outgoing treasurer. Former trustee Kim Urbanowski was appointed to fill the vacancy left by Donnie Steele's departure. Uh, there's more to be done and sometimes you just have to go to a different spot to get the things done that you want to get done and that's is in Lansing. It looks like it's in Lansing so um, I hope to be very helpful to this community in the future as well. And with that, we'll wrap up our look back at 2022 on behalf of the hardworking ONTV TV news team who are out in the community all year long covering the news that makes Lake Orion such a great place to live. I'm Stacey Calloway. Thanks for watching and have a safe and happy new year.